All right, so you have now, or you should have now, finished drawing your cube and your pyramid onto the spaces for them that are already labeled. Remember to label them between them linear perspective. Linear for line, you're using lines to help make them look like they're going back in space, and that's what we mean by perspective. We're using lines to create the illusion of space and depth. So from here to there, it's going back in space, looking like it's going to that vanishing point and to that vanishing point. So please label it in between those two. Those are the only ones we're going to be using linear perspective for, at least um, specifically. We might do a little bit of that down here too, but not using that vanishing or that horizon line. Okay, so we're going to do sphere next. Um, let me explain a little bit about a sphere. A sphere is a ball. It's a globe. It's something circular. Its, it's diameter is, um, and radius are all uh, the same, right? The, the distance from here to here is the same as it is from here to here or here to here, uh, making a circle. Now, it also goes back in space from here to here the same distance as it does from here to here. And that's what makes it not a circle, but a sphere. A sphere is a round surface that has that same radius every different direction from the center point. Okay, so what I like to do is a technique that I was taught in college um, to help me uh, carve away from a box, right? This square, if I have this sphere right in front of it, you can see that if I just carve away the corners cur uh, curving the sphere, I can get rid of the box and create the circle that will eventually become a sphere. Now, we're only going to be making a circle so far with line. There's nothing that we can do with line to make it look three-dimensional unless we do hatching and cross-hatching. Uh, but we're going to be doing shading, and shading will enhance the three-dimensionality of it. So notice that with this sphere, it's getting more light here, and as it curves away, it gets less light as it comes down here. And that, that difference in light to dark across that surface helps us to see that it's a three-dimensional form. That comes the next step with value. We're just going to focus on line now. All right, so we're going to create a, a square to carve away the curves of our uh, square to make this circle. All right, um, so let's uh, follow the directions on the handout. Uh, remember, you have a handout. Um, attached to the directions in, as photographs, but also as links, there's a, a, a direction sheet too. The directions tell you for the sphere, you're going to draw a square with four sides that are four inches long. So it's going to go from zero to four for all four sides, okay? And we want to center it into this space. So what we'll do is we'll somewhere near the top, but not right at the top, put your ruler's edge zero at the edge of the paper and make a mark at one inch, and then go over four inches, which is five on the ruler, right? Five minus one is four inches, that's the distance, and make another mark ab above the five. So the distance from here is one, two, three, four inches. And then do it somewhere near the bottom of that, that area for this sphere. Make sure your ruler's edge is at the, ed or zero is at the edge of the paper. Make a mark at one again, oops, there's the mark for one. And again, for five, now you've got four marks, right? We need to line them up to create first the side edges, and then we'll do the bottom and top, all right? So uh, the next step after you've got those marks, remember, if you need to go slower, you can pause the video, or you can watch it through and then restart the video. I'm going to put my rulers uh, zero at the fold of the paper at the top. And I'm going to line up my top mark with my bottom mark. And I'm going to start my line at one inch so that it's one inch from the fold. And it remember it's a four inch long line. So I'm going to draw my line to five inches and stop it right at the five inch, which is right there. So my mark was a little lower than the the length of the line, so I stopped it before my marks went. And I do the same thing on the right-hand side. Put my ruler at the fold, line up my two marks, start my line at the one inch down, and stop it at five inches, and I'm going to make another vertical mark there, because it's a little higher than my mark was to begin with. 
Now these are one inch from the fold, so I don't need to remeasure them. I just draw from here to there. That's another four inch long line. This is four, this is four, this is four, and this is four, okay? Now, you might want to double check. Is it really four inches? Did you, did you go straight up and down, or are they kind of going like this or like that? It can make a big difference in the believability of your sphere. So make sure that, that they're accurate, okay? I'm winding up my, where I, I measured, okay, this is the end of my four inches, and this is the end. That's where I draw my line, not where my original measurement marks were uh, for the other lines, okay? And there's my, my square to help me make my circle. Okay. Now, we want to know where the top of the circle is in relationship to the side edges and the bottom. They're right in the middle of that square. Okay. So where, uh, where it is at the, the bottom the top and the two side edges, it's right in the middle of our square that we've drawn. So we want to measure that distance from top to bottom on all four sides. So I'm going to put my ruler at zero on the left hand side, it's four inches, so two into four to, make, to divide it in half is right there. Just bisect it with a really small little mark. We call that a tick mark because it, a tick measures distance in this case. It's kind of like the tick tock, tick tock of a clock. Right? So it, it's, a, it's called a tick mark. Um, I'm just looking at this side. It's hard to see. Oh, it's just a reflection. There's so much light bouncing off of it. I see. I thought maybe that line wasn't there. Okay, so now we're going to measure along all four sides. So from that line to there is four inches. Half of four is two. Half of four is two. Half of four is two. So that's where the outermost point should be at the top, outermost of the side, bottom, and the other side, and back to the top. Now, whoops, when we, when we make the circle inside of that, we need to make sure that we do it gradually. This is not a football, it doesn't come to points, it doesn't flatten out, it's not deflated, it's, it's fully circular. Okay, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. There we go. I think I lost it when I tripped over the, the tripod. Okay, so we're going to just do what I call um, ghost lines. I'm going to just hover above my paper. I'm resting my hand on the surface, and I'm going to use my hand kind of like you would a compass to pivot. And what I'm doing is I'm just drawing ghost lines to, to go from this point to that point in a nice gentle curve and the more I do it the more I create that the more memory my wrist gets in making that curve this is called muscle memory if you're an athlete you probably had your coaches tell you about muscle memory the more you engage in an activity like this repetition creates a memory of it and your muscles are more likely to do it exactly the same way each time after it's gained that memory okay so that's what the ghost lines help me do. It also helps me to, to see, am I too close and I'm going to cramp it? Or am I too far and I have to stretch? So it helps me to, to gauge my position of my hand, too, so it's more natural. And so I, I do ghost lines where I don't even draw. And then after I think I've got the muscle memory and I've got the right curvature, I start drawing. I just let it tap gently on the surface of the paper very lightly. And you want to make sure that you don't hit this line until you get to the tick mark. You, you're not coming to here, you're coming right to this line. Okay? You want to make it start at the line and come out of the line inside of the box and then come to the box's edge at that mark. Okay? It's really important that you don't let it um, be less than a less than the uh, dimensions of the, the side edges. So it's a gradual curve, and it starts at the four lines that you started at the point where you divided the, each of the lines in half.
right? Now, this looks a little flattened out. It probably needs to come outward a little bit more, but I can tell a little bit more easily if I turn my paper and continue the process. Okay, it's easier to do this, by the way, if you are using the same motion because you've started your muscle memory and place your hands where it's comfortable and does it. Do your ghost lines, which means no lines at all, and then very light lines. Gradual curve from the tick mark on the line to the other tick mark on its line. Nice gradual curve. Now, here's what I like to do. I like to look now before I go too far and see, does this curve look, look a lot like this one? Is the space from here to there about the same as it is from there to there? Is the distance the same? Is the shape the same? Um, is this curvature the same? Right? And does it come to a point or does it flatten out? All of those things. And then I can make some adjustments before I go on. There we go. And, oops, keep knocking into my, into my tripod. Everything's really tight in this classroom. All right, so now, because I've got multiple lines, I'm going to clean up, get rid of the lines that don't really belong on my sphere. Right, remember, you should be using a 2H, I'm sorry, an HB pencil. I'm using a 3B just so you can see more easily. If I used my HB, um, I don't think you could see too well what I'm doing. And it's kind of smearing because it's the HB. All right, so this, this should be a nice continuous curve now. Just kissing the, the outer edge and then coming back in. It's like kiss, okay? Now, let's rotate the paper again. That's not a bad curve, right? So um, it could be a little bit better, but I think it's pretty good so far. Now I'm turning my paper again, and I'm continuing the process from here to here, my, my muscle memory and my ghost lines. Don't let it flatten out. Let it be a really nice gradual curve from one point to the other. And now, once again, before you go on, you want to make sure that it comes right to the line at the tick mark. Maybe this curve needs to be adjusted just a bit there, and that curve matches up with it to there. And then, once again, erase your, your lines that don't belong, um, the ones that you adjusted. Don't have multiple lines. And another thing is, make sure that when you do all of your forms, make sure they're as long and continuous as, prop as you can. Don't make them sketchy. Sketchy lines show that you're, you're hesitant. They are not artistic. I have a lot of students, uh, especially beginners, who think if they do lots of this as they make stuff, you know, lots of this, that it looks artistic. And it doesn't. It looks like you don't know what you're doing. Okay, so that would be a marking system for creating textures or something agitated or something um, energetic. We're not doing that. We're trying to draw the outer edges of a circle that will eventually become a form called a sphere. All right, so last, last curved edge should match up with all the other curves. Remember, you're going right to your line. If you have it inside of those four lines, you're not doing it correctly. You want to go right up to the line where it's bisected by that tick mark to draw your circle. And by the way, if your measurements are off, you, would, you might make one too long, the curve too long, and then the other one gets too short, and it's not a circle anymore. So you have to be really accurate in your measurements. Try not to get too dark. Remember, erase any error lines, get rid of extra lines, any sketchy lines. 
And then for this one, we're eventually going to be erasing the square. Um, so you can do that now, or you can do it when we get started to put shading into it. I recommend keep it because we're going to use the same information for the ellipse to build on. All right. So that's it for the sphere. Now mine's a little bit, you know, needs a little work. It's not perfect. And I'll probably work on it more off camera. Maybe you need to too.